So this video is on type one and type two errors in psychology. However, when we're looking at type one errors and type two errors, we also need to know about determining significance and levels of probability. So a type one error in psychology is um, when a researcher accepts the H1, which is our alternative hypothesis, but should have accepted the H0, the null hypothesis. So they say the results are significant when really they're not. And in order to understand that, you do need to know about um, the null and the alternative hypotheses. So hopefully you will know that hypotheses come in pairs. You always have the null hypothesis, which is called the H0, and you will know that that is a prediction that states there will be no difference or no correlation. And that's where all investigations begin. And then you also have the alternative to the null, and that's called the H1. Um, that's called the H1. So the alternative hypothesis is the prediction that states there will be a difference or correlation. And the alternative hypothesis can either be directional or non-directional. And, and as you know, it depends whether you've had previous research, in which case you choose a directional hypothesis or no previous research and you choose a non-directional. So with a type 1 error, the, um, the researcher has accepted the H1 as it's he or she has accepted or they have accepted the H1, the either directional or non-directional, saying that, yes, we've done our investigation and there's some kind of difference or correlation. Um, there, there is a significant one. But actually, they've made a mistake. When we say error, we're talking about a mistake. They've made a mistake. There is no difference or correlation. And so they should have accepted the null, the H0. A type two error is the opposite. It occurs when a researcher accepts the H0, the null hypothesis, but should have accepted the H1, the alternative hypothesis. So they say the results are not significant when actually they are significant. And so they, again, this is a mistake. They've done their investigation and they found no significant difference or correlation in their results and their data set, but actually there was something going on. So when do you think a type one error is likely to occur? And when do you think a type 2 error is likely to occur? And to, in order to answer both of those questions, then you need to consider the probability levels. So with probability, our, now you should know this, in psychology, our go-to probability level is P is less than 0.05. Um, sometimes we say P is less than 0.05, sometimes we say P is equal to 0.05, and sometimes we say P is equal to or less than 0.05, it all means the same in psychology. I'm sure mathematicians would have my guts for garters saying that. But what it means, P is less than 0.05 means there is a 5% probability that our results are due to chance. And you, so the P stands for the probability. There is a 5% probability that our results are due to chance. And that means that we've done our investigation, we've done this correct statistical test on the data set, and we found out the results are significant. However, when we use the 0.05 probability level, then we accept that there is a 5% probability the results are actually due to chance, and that's okay. We're okay with that margin of error. We're okay to infer the results to the rest of the population, to generalize, um, to infer the results, because we've said they're significant. And in science, we accept that margin of error that actually there is a slight probability the results are due to chance. So if P is less than 0.05 means there is a 5% probability that our results are due to chance, can you pause the video and just say out loud what the following probability levels mean? Use that sentence about there's a 5% probability the results are due to chance. So pause it now and welcome back. And so hopefully you have said P is less than 0.01 means there is a 1% probability the results are due to chance. P is less than 0.10 means there is a 10% probability the results are due to chance. And P is less than 0.02 means there's a 2% probability the results are due to chance. And what we have to consider is which of those probability levels is the most lenient and which is the most stringent, what is the strongest level. So when you, and when you look at them, so P is less than 0.10 is the most lenient because we're saying that we're, we're happy our results are significant, but there's a huge 10% probability the results are due to chance. And with the P is less than 0.01, then we're saying, yes, our results are significant. And there's only a 1% probability the results are due to chance. 
So P is less than 0.01 is the most stringent. It's our strongest level of probability. And P is less than 0.10 is the most lenient. The reason I've put P is less than 0.02 is because um, if we use a two-tailed hypothesis, which is a non-directional, then the most stringent level we tend to go to is 0.02. But I really wouldn't worry about that. I'm, I'm, I would just focus in on that P is less than 0.01 is 1% probability the results are due to chance. And P is less than 0.10 is there is a 10% probability the results are due to chance. So back to type 1 and type 2 errors. Why am I jabbering on about probability? So thinking about those probability levels, when is a type 1 error likely to occur? And so which probability level is going to happen when you've made a type 1 error? And remember, a type 1 error is when you've accepted the alternative hypothesis, so the directional or non-directional, but you should have accepted the null. So the answer is P is less than 0.10 because the probability level is too lenient. You're likely to have made a type 1 error if you've used P is less than 0.10 because there is 10% probability the results are due to chance. So when is a type 2 error likely to occur? And remember, a type 2 is when we've accepted the null hypothesis saying there is no difference, there is no correlation or effect. Um, um, so which probability level have we used where we've made that mistake when we should have accepted the alternative? And it's when P is less than 0.01, because that probability level is just too stringent. It's it's saying there is only 1% probability the results are due chance. Now, if you're like me and you're thinking, look, either there's a difference or there isn't, then just banish that thought. Because in science, we say things are significant, but we always have a margin of error. And so in psychology, um, which is a science, you know, we if we ex accept the null hypothesis, we're saying there's been no difference. But in order to accept the alternative hypothesis, then we're happy for there to be a margin of error that there might. And for us, our go to is the 0 0.05 level. And so that leads on to the next. Oh, well, first of all, a way to remember type one and type two errors is through the story of the boy who cried wolf. So if you don't know that story, it's very simple. There was a boy who was a shepherd and he was up on the hills. And one day he was like, help, help, there's a wolf, come and help me. All the villagers ran to see him and there wasn't a wolf. He was lying. What a naughty boy. The next day, he did it again. Help, help, there's a wolf. All the villagers came running and there wasn't. He's like, wah, ha, you fell for it again. The third day, he went, help, help, there's a wolf. And the villagers were like, we don't leave you. But there was a wolf and it ate the boy. And this is a story, you know, the boy who cried wolf is basically teaching children not to tell lies. Because if you tell lies, people won't believe you when it's important. But we can use that to remember type one and type two errors in the right order. So the boy who cried wolf caused both type one and type two errors in that order. First, everyone believed there was a wolf when there wasn't. Next, they believed there was no wolf when there was. So you substitute the word effect for wolf and you're done. So first, everyone believed there was an effect, but there wasn't. And that's your type one error. Next, they believed there was no effect when there was. And that's your type two error. So classic exam style questions are things like explain why the psychologist used the P is less than 0.05 level of significance. And if you get that question, it's asking you basically about to talk about type one and type two errors. It wants you to say this. The psychologist used the P is less than 0.05 level of significance to strike a balance between making a type one and a type two error. If she had used or he used or they if she had used P is less than 0.10, she may, may have made a type 1 error. If she used P is less than 0.01, she may have made a type 2 error.